Good morning everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Today's video I continue to explore soft oil pastels. Yeah, I got that right. And I am going to create, I think, a really wonderful flower lady. I call her Mayflower. Now, this process took me hours and hours of learning and discovery, so I've edited a lot out of this to save you time and fast forwarded it um, to, <laughs> again to save you time. It's all about saving your time in this busy world. So stop rambling, Sharon. Anyway, what I wanted to share is I've kept the integrity of the full process there so you can see how she comes together. I've even kept in there my warts and all where I strip away her eye and nose and mouth when I realised that they were off centre. I don't know what I'd done. I think I must have flipped my tracing paper around at some stage uh, when I was doing the preparation. But I'm Sharon. I'm digressing. I hope you enjoy this video. If it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, consider giving me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. See you on the next video. Well, actually, I'm going to stay with you and keep commentary. Commentating? Yeah, commentating. Anyway, let's go with this. Bye bye. This is a very exciting one to share with you because, as I mentioned before, I start off and I traced a lady that I'd created. And the reason I traced it is if I put it on tracing paper, I can then transfer the image onto my paper because when you're doing this fine detail work with very thick soft pot oil pastels, it was going to be a challenge. And so for myself, it's about how can I do this? Because so, I've done these type of women before, but with oil paintings or acrylics. But these pastels are going to represent a whole new challenge. So don't feel like you're cheating. Do whatever's going to help you because for me it's about learning this process and i am going in there with my blues and my white and you can see that i get out a little cotton board now the reason i use the cotton board for myself is for the blending and if i've got a very tight area i'm working in it's going to help me bring some control now i apologize that my hand is in the way for a lot of this however when I step away or move my hand away, you get the opportunity to see what I've done or what I'm created. And yes, I have got my dressing gown on in this process. It was late at night, it was cold, and I just stuck my dressing gown on. So apologies. The The idea wasn't that I would be in the frame as much, but my camera angle was wrong. And I still felt sharing this process with you would be worth it. Now my eyes are watering. I do apologise. It's early in the morning. I'm doing this before I go to work because I'm not committed. And hay fever's a little bad. <laughs> so my eyes look really puffy. What's going on there? Anyway, it's not about me. It's about the artwork and the video. I am trying to, throughout this process, understand how I can create skin tones. Now, I've watched a few people on YouTube to inspire me. I will you know, continue to research, but I learn by doing. Now, I am using some what I thought think are skin tones, but then adding in peaches or pinks or browns or um, I want to say like a, I can't even think of it, like little, little, little greys. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, <laughs> you can see I've got some um, oil pastels in front of me to the side, but I've also got some to the left. Now, I learned a big lesson with this, which was working on one area and not symmetrically didn't work for me because by the time I got to the other side, because this was ours, I didn't understand what combination I did to get the skin tones. So if I was to do this project again going forward, I would apply it to the left and the right hand side at the same time and slowly work out what the tones are so that I'm not going to be scrambling towards the end and get that balance. The second thing is using different oil pastels made a difference. And so although this piece I'm really proud of when I stand back, <laughs> when I stand close up, it's got ugly marks in there. So certain ones seem heavier than others. Now, I don't know if it's just the pressure I'm applying, the paper I'm using, but I can, some of it scrapes the oil pastels off. Some of it, it feels heavier, so it's pulling it off. Some is softer, so it applies nicely. So I think working with a same brand on a project like this matters. Now I'm learning, this is only my, what is it, fourth one? 
that I've worked on with oil pastels. And so I'm going to continue exploring this, but I wanted to share my wisdom with you at this very early stage. The second lesson is the paper. I don't think I would use an A4 sheet of paper again for doing a portrait only because of how delicate an area it is for you to get in there with the detail. So I'd go probably larger, but I'll explore that and I'll share it with you. And I'll actually say, did it add value or not? Did it mean that I could create more freely? Could I get more detail in there? Did I have more control? So I'll share with that on an up and coming project and I'll work on a bigger size. The next thing was the colour of the paper that I used. I feel that I chose the wrong colour. I should have used one that maybe has got peach tones in there or pink tones to complement because there was a fight going on with some of the grey uh, background coming through. And also I believe the paper I used was maybe too coarse because from a distance she looks okay. When you're close up you can see every bumps and everything so it's not smooth. However, that in itself adds a lot of beauty because it gives you a sense of real oil paints where you can see the strokes. Towards the end, I'm a lot looser and I think the looser works better than trying to be so controlled like I am currently. So I wasn't too concerned about this being picture perfect at this stage. I've got a reference photo to the left and that's to help me understand shades, shapes, how it should look. Uh, and I find that that helps me when I'm creating something because I'm learning and you can't learn by knowing everything. Sorry, I'm about to cancel again. Uh, you learn by doing. Well, I do anyway. So I have worked on the side cheek, the nose area. Now, I cut a lot of the lip area out because I go back and edit her lips out. So I didn't want to show you too much what I was doing about, um, should I say, what I was doing only to remove it and then redo it in a different way. So I do show you a little bit just because you might under, you might ask, well, Sharon, how did you get your lips? So again, lips get um, edited out, nose gets edited out. I went with a pink tone to start with and I just didn't like it. It didn't feel what she wanted to be. So I worked back and forward. I changed the pink and I dilute it down so it's almost white. Uh, but I come in and add some peach later and then I really like the end result. Now, when you're looking at the picture, if you look to the right hand side, glaringly obvious when you're looking at it now, my eyes are not aligned. And I believe when I added my tracing paper and then I was editing my image, I must have flipped the tracing paper. So the left eye and the right eye became the same eye, if that makes sense. But because I was so focused on the left hand side and creating the skin, working on the skin tones, just enjoying learning, I didn't see it at the time. So I could have had the opportunity to have edited it at that stage. Feedback is a gift. <laughs> Looking back on your process is a gift. So I encourage you to do it. Even if you don't put your content on any kind of social media platform, Record it and have a look back at your work, even if it's on a time lapse. So you can actually see some things that work or some things that don't, or you gain a different perspective. When you're in your painting or in your piece of work, it is too hard sometimes to zoom out and see what's actually happening. Now, I spent some time working on the neck area and the shoulders and the chin. That was to help me understand perspective and it really helped highlight that I'd made a chin too chiseled. So I do come and I soften that out. But sometimes I think it's about giving yourself time to think, time to breathe, time to discover. So that's why I work in different sections at a time. So for me, while I was contemplating the face and the neck, I thought I'm going to add some blue. Now I wanted this to have an 80s vibe. So for me, the bold colours and the uh, the pop of the background really was going to help the colour come through. I wanted it to be a happy, joyous place. Um, and May flower, it just reminds me of the UK when spring's coming and you get all these flowers coming out. And we did this little pageant and everything like that. Anyway, I digressed again. So for me, the time I took to do the blue and I wanted the strokes to be loose, I didn't want it to look like it had too dark a blue outline so that it really looked cartoony. But I was trying to find the balance and maybe create a bit of movement. But it was enough to suggest, okay, I'm happy with it going to have a blue background. 
you got to see the very close up ugly stripes there. <laughs> anyway, now I go back and I am starting to bring more life into the skin. It felt a little bit too um, like a dead skin. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so I am going back and forth again and I've I've softened her jaw out, which is very subtle for you. You might not have noticed. And I'm now coming around and working on the shaping. Uh, I found some better crayons or colours. So I'm scraping off her lips there, uh, getting rid of a lot of the colour. And I'm using my cotton buds to sort of blend it. So I sort of scrape and then blend and scrape, blend until I get rid of the excessive colour. I think this is what's really rewarding about oil pastels that you can easily edit out. There's always time for you to go back and fix. So I'm coming in with the orange. I still don't end up with the tone that I'm really happy with here, but I wanted to show you the process. So I go in and I'm trying to create a softer feel, a more organic lip. Maybe like she's got a little, little bit of lip gloss on. Uh, again, I'm not going to spend too much time because I do end up editing her lips out once I realise that she's just a little bit out of were the proportions I wanted them to be. And I was contemplating there, do I create a mouth with a dark spot there so it looks like she's pouting a little bit, or do I show a slight shadow of the teeth? And I thought, that's just getting too complicated for my first time doing this, Sharon. Strip it back and make it a little bit simpler. So I started to move on to my forehead. Now, I knew that the top area was going to have flowers around it. So I wasn't too concerned about filling in a whole face and doing a hair. To me, that just felt a little bit of a waste of time. So with the lessons I'd learned from my cheeks and skin colour, I found a better way of coming up with my skin tones easier. So I wasn't fighting it, but my I get a little bit looser with my uh, strokes. Now, I'm working on the eye to the left, and this is where I start to realise, hang on, there's something wrong there, Sharon. Get your tracing paper, scrape it off. So I didn't spend too much time showing you that particular eye, but you get to see how I can edit over it now. Although it's left a trace of the old colour, it was in a controlled way where I could work over it. And that once I corrected the eye, it took me a while. I don't know why. Sometimes, sometimes you feel like you're just fighting your art and you just have to think, don't throw it in the bin. Because I think at this stage, I really was going to finish it, throw it in the bin. And I'm like, no. The process isn't about perfection, Sharon. It's about learning how to do it. It's about relearning how to do faces. And it's about putting what I'm wanting on paper. And so I decided to stick stick with it and work through and problem solve and share that with you. And that to, I'm really grateful to the past Sharon that she kept it with you and shared it with you. Because although there's things I could do differently. I think the essence of the final piece is um, what I wanted, bright. Um, but also you look at your work sometimes and you think, wow, I did that. And even though it's not perfect, I'm really proud of the end results considering it's a new medium. I'm learning all these different things. I had to work through problem solvings. And that's another tip I would give you. If ever you're getting frustrated, if ever you feel like it's too much, don't put it in the bin straight away. Walk away from it or find that as part of the joy of creating, which is the problem solving. Because if I really feel when you problem solve, you will learn bigger lessons to take forward to your other work. I know that there becomes a time when you can add no more value or it's just taken away from value. So you need to know when to walk away. But to me, because this was a part done uh, picture, I knew I could edit it and change it. There wasn't really a reason for me to walk away. So I do the dance of the eye and I couldn't get it quite right. But then I found that by adding maybe the eyeshadow, maybe I add in the crease, maybe add in um, uh, the depth of where the eyelashes are going to be maybe that's enough for me to say hang on i can see light at the end of the tunnel and i'm happy with where this is going eyeshadow is really interesting for me again i think it's because it's a small area 
How do I make it look like they're really wearing eyeshadow? How do I make it look like they're glistening? And I'm not a person that wears a lot of makeup, so I am not a make. Uh, what do you call them? Makeup technician? I got no idea. Made that word up most likely. If you do do makeup, let me know. So I feel like what I might do is work on just some eyes and then add different eyeshadow to them so I learn how to do some blending for eyeshadows or eye makeup so when I'm going to create these. I am happy with the end result but it's just a matter of how can I learn this skill, how can I get better, what could it look like, uh, different eye shapes. So if I do go ahead with that let me know if you'd be interested and I can look at sharing that content with you. So this is a good time for me to say thank you so much for staying with me. If you love listening to the ramblings of this old lady, uh, stay with me um, and see this project to the end. I think just, you know, if you don't like my voice, switch the volume down, just watch it. If you just want to skip to the parts that interest you, that's fine. But I do appreciate people that stay with me throughout this whole process. And I hope that you learn something from this or you're inspired, um, or you're in compelled to leave a comment. So thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Thank you for choosing to spend some time with me. I really appreciate it. And let me know when um, you've been invoked to share something. Was there something in there that maybe you've learned? Have I given you the courage to edit your work and, and um, not throw it in the bin? I don't know, but communicate with me. Let me know your thoughts because when you interact with me, that keeps me wanting to come back and share my art process with you all. Anyway, this is me putting my uh, tracing paper back on a, a knot because I'm wanting to check, have I got my eye the shape I wanted it to be originally? Because I was happy with that. If not, where do I need to do the fine edits? Where do I need to change it? Now with the eyes, it's interesting because your eyes are not pure white. So going in with those slight blue tones and then slowly bringing in the white helps make your eye pop. And then when you go in and you've got your darker on the edges, your little iris, those little bit of white add and make it feel like there's a little bit of moisture in there. And then understanding how you get the little white area just in front of your eye, that's interesting. And then the little pink tones here. Now, because it was, sorry, my eye keeps leaking. I'm, I'm, I'm emotional sharing my work with you today. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? The, yeah, the eyes are interesting because it was such a small area. How do I get these different tones in there without this big end of a crayon just going in there and, and adding it? So I don't get it as perfect the eye tones as I want, but I think I've got them where I'm really happy with them at the end. And then to help air that white area there by putting a little bit of brown underneath and then softening it out. Uh, I loved my little uh, cotton buds for this and I did reuse them. If I was going to be using the same colours or tones, you could reuse them. And so consider that as well. You can see I've got my crayons all over depending on the angle of them. Uh, I also have a little, um, I've got some cards which are called healing energy cards and I'm not necessarily I like inspiration and these cards give me inspiration so I'm going to do a shuffle on here and tell you what my day is going to be today uh, and they just give positive affirmations more than anything they're not anything necessarily uh, spiritual satanic whatever <laughs> these are just inspirational cards and I do believe in that healing energy of art. Oh, I'm editing my nose and while I'm editing it, I'm shuffling here. So I do apologize for the nose. This is when I worked out, okay, I've got my eyes roughly where I'm happy with now. Not perfect, but happy with. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to sculpt my nose back. And again, I wasn't too sure if I was going to be able to do it, but I had belief in myself. <laughs> and so I go on a journey where I'm recreating a lips again. So this is where the lips will end up staying the same. The nose will end up staying the same and the eyes will end up staying the same. So I'm happy with um where the body parts are and the composition now it's about just trying to bring her back to life again uh, make it look like it belongs 
and then bringing those tones through and I got to the nose where I almost felt like less is more and so I go and work on it trying not to erode what I've just done and then just keep going back and adding shading uh, the nostrils really I really struggled with the nostrils on this one Ooh, a bit of a close-up there so I'm going in a little bit closer to try and see if I can get you to see the finer details so um again I'll keep going backwards and forwards until I get what I'm happy with <coughs> and you can see that there are still those gray tones coming through so I'm trying to still bring some of that pinkish color through but trying to find the balance now her nose does improve and her lips do improve, I promise you. But her eyes do look like they're staring at you now. And with the eyebrows, it was a matter of I put the brown where I wanted her eyebrows to be and then softened them out. And then I'd add more layers and soften them out and add more layers, soften them out. And that really helped um, give them a little bit more life and a little bit more detail. Um, I hope that you like seeing this closer, close up piece. I mean, it looks a little bit worse for wear when you look close up, but <laughs> I still believe in it. Anyway, what is the what is the healing oracle telling me today? What is coming out for me? <laughs> Freedom through faith. So this one is, I calm my thoughts and rise above fear. I free myself of all doubt and entrust in my doubts to God. I have faith in God, perfecting time and placements and trust he will find freedom. It's a little bit too religious for me, that one, but apologies for people that are religious. Um, but what I've taken from that is have faith in what you're doing, believe in what you're doing. And it's scary sharing sometimes my processes with you. There's a lot of amazing artists out there. There's a lot of people showing you stuff on social media. So why would you choose to come and watch me? Well, if this helps one person um, pick up some oil pastels, and help their mind and their well-being and they find some inner peace through creating then i'm happy to keep sharing with you anyway i hope you don't mind me sharing that and i hope you see that with the intent that it's meant to be putting some positivity out there and i'm all for people following or doing whatever gives them inner peace whatever makes them happy um anyway let's focus back on the artwork now So I am now trying to, the nose I'm really sort of semi happy with, but the nostrils were still bugging me, but I just chose to move on to the lips. And I wanted to really focus in on making these lips look a little bit more natural. <laughs> still coming in and keep blending. Now, you might be able to do this really quickly, but for me, it was a layering process and uh, finding that balance. And every time you do add, you're adding value to your piece because some of those tones still come through now could i tell you the perfect formula for skin absolutely not i'm gonna have to do this multiple times however i've now bought many a pack of um oil pastels and i have a drawers behind and i'll show you on my next video where i've got all the different tones together so i put all what i think create skin tones in one area and then maybe all my reds and oranges in another and so on so that when i'm working on it now i'm not looking at brands i'm just looking at um tones so i skipped where i did her flowers on the head because again i'm trying to save you time for the video but i felt with leaving one side of it um blank you'll be able to see how i created it but sometimes i just wanted to just go into the creative process i was going to just do one before you know it i'd created half a hair and i know i wanted a few wispy pieces coming down now some people might have preferred that not to be there that's fine when you're creating your piece of art do whatever you want to do anyway i am on uh to you we're looking at right side but it's her left side and I'm applying the same skin tones that I did to the forehead around here and you'll see that I start to apply it to the left and the right and that's where I had that big learn that Sharon working it at the same time so you're going to get similar kind of skin tones 
you'll see me coming in with a darker uh, one and that's to give those shadows where they would be um, in certain areas and I come in a little bit more on the cheeks to add a little bit more colour but I'm trying to get balance left and right and I, you see when I'm using my pinky when I use my pinky it's when I want a very soft blending when I'm using the bigger fingers it's probably when there's a bigger area and I feel like I need to apply a little bit more pressure that's probably because on, on that side she's been caked on with a lot of royals <laughs> Anyway, I'm trying to get a healthy glow, but a delicacy. And I'm trying to sculpt this area here and this area here and around the lip area. So the lips are still going to come back and be worked on, but I quite like the natural look. I know on where I'm working there, the little bit of hair that's going to come down again on the other side, uh, there's going to be a little bit of hair showing. And so I decided to paint that in first. And then blend it and the flowers then will, will fall over it. But I really do love the effect of these flowers. Now, I wasn't going for really precise flowers. I just wanted to work with tones and give you a feeling that they were flowers. And the looser I got with it, the better it was. And you will see that I apply a lot more pressure on this because I want to leave really strong pigments there and... Um, I'm going to layer things over each other, which will help with that depth. I really do love that orange and yellow flower that sat on the top of her hair there. That's when I got a lot of inspiration. And you'll see I'll go in with my red and I'm really pushing it on now because there's dark colour underneath. Now, I always start with my darker tones and then come and do lighter and just do random movements. And then that will help with that depth that you get in there. And I'll come in and I'll add little bits of green like I'm doing there. I use three tones of green, dark, uh, dark, medium, light. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for my commentary. <laughs> and then I look at, well, I want to have some overlay in each other. I know I've done the bigger flowers here, but I didn't want those to be the hero. So I'm coming in with what I think are branches, adding some blue, and then I'll go dark, medium, light. <laughs> <laughs> to add depth and you'll see me work back and forth with that and I really really enjoyed the process of this and then when I added my yellow I'm like yeah stick it in in lots of other places and uh, get creative and I just wanted to have a nice scattering of colour that would help contrast, pop but also add some beautiful depth to those flowers so you see me going in with my darker light medium and light <laughs> yellow tones and then I'll go to and fro adding my greens which I've just done there um I didn't want there to be too much foliage in there but just a suggestion and then um I'm really carried away here and excited thinking come on you've nearly filled the canvas get in there <laughs> and I'm using my different tones again dark medium light uh, to help with that suggestion of depth and you know what she is stunningly bright happy to look at I keep staring at her she's on my wall to the right here I will sort of show you a close-up of her and I will eventually show you my wall because on my recent videos I'm like I've got my oil pastels all down my wall here uh, and I do that for reference one to encourage me to keep going two to look at what I enjoy or what I don't or three to look at how my art evolves and I encourage you to do that um, I'm going to do more and more of these women because I really enjoy them. Um, I just love the, the process of it and then the reward that you get from it. So we are going to be not too far away from the end of this video. Uh, I will come in and I will show you her in its entirety. So it's been a pleasure hanging out with you, me rambling on and all. Not so much Dodgy FM, but I might be switching that on soon. And you see me coming in now just with the fine details. I love this part because these are the parts that really help make it pop. Now, I've got a specific blender for oil pastels and I just wanted to soften the hair out. I wasn't going for realism with hair, but I just wanted to soften it out. And I am now praying to everybody that I don't have a shaky hand and put a really big black mark through her eye as I am adding her... Uh, mascara and eyelashes and I come in with the final highlights work on her lips and we think yeah we're, we're done but uh thank you for hanging out with me 
Uh, if you feel this video has added value, remember to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. And make sure you come back and see future videos. Or if you're new to my channel, maybe go back and have a look at some of my back, back catalogue. Um, I've got to go because I've got to head off to work. Uh, but I will be back and I hope you enjoy seeing out the rest of this process and how my Mayflower came to life. And I will, um, yeah, I will show you my wall at some stage. But for now, keep safe, keep creating and come back and see me. Bye bye.